America's recurring nightmare returned this week. A former student armed with a semi-automatic rifle mowed down 17 people at a Florida high school. It's the latest of 1,600 mass shootings in the U.S. since Sandy Hook just over five years ago. And if that wasn't devastating enough, the predictability of what followed left anguished families powerless and angry. Congress offered thoughts and prayers, but no action. And at a rally yesterday, a teenage survivor of Wednesday's shooting called out adults for not doing more. They say that tougher gun laws do not decrease gun violence. We call BS! They say a good guy with a gun stops a bad guy with a gun. We call BS! They say guns are just tools like knives and are as dangerous as cars. We call BS! But are they listening on the Hill? Congress seems to make it easier, not harder, to get guns. If someone's decided I'm going to commit this crime, they'll find a way to get the gun to do it. That's Senator Marco Rubio, just one of a long list of mostly Republican lawmakers who, according to the New York Times, have stuffed their political campaigns with millions of dollars from the National Rifle Association, or the NRA. The biggest recipient of all? Donald Trump. The NRA spent $30 million in support of Trump's campaign in 2016, and here he is at last year's NRA convention. You came through for me and I am going to come through for you. Yeah, this past week, Trump again came through for the gun lobby. He didn't even mention guns in the statement until it was left to a reporter to bring it up after he was done. Thank you, and God bless you all. Thank you very much. Mr. President, why does this keep happening to America? Will you do something about guns? Thank you. Not a word. So the NRA has this stranglehold over Republican politicians and basically a veto over any meaningful gun control. And now it's emerging that the NRA may have been under the influence of Russia. According to McClatchy newspapers, the FBI is looking into whether the Kremlin used the NRA to illegally funnel cash to Donald Trump's campaign. The NRA's influence over GOP politicians and Russia's connections to the organization raise important questions about whether meaningful gun control can ever happen in the U.S. Joining me now to talk about all of this is Alan Grayson. He's a former Democratic congressman and running again in Florida. And he joins me from Orlando. So, Alan, you were in Congress when that horrible shooting happened at the Pulse nightclub. You fought for change after that, but... Here we are again, you've got families in anguish, you've got the kids saying, hey, adults, please, why aren't you doing something? Why aren't the adults in Congress doing something about guns? Well, that's because the Republican Party is a wholly owned subsidiary of the NRA. And uh, money uh, is everything in American politics. Uh, the NRA was able to deploy 80 or $90 million to benefit Donald Trump and other Republican candidates in the last election. And they have veto power over who the Republican nominee is in virtually every election from president down to dog catcher in the United States. Uh, that's an enormous amount of political power and that means that they have veto power over any effort uh, to provide safety from guns. I mean, give us a sense, you must see this, how much pressure can they actually put on? Do they tell people what to say? Uh, they tell people what to vote. Uh, the, the NRA uh, scores basically every legislator, federal and state, uh, in the entire country, uh, and their score is based upon how you vote. It's a fairly transparent process, uh, but if you don't toe the line, you see your NRA score go from an A to an F, and for a Republican, that means that your career is over. So I want to talk now, we were learning from McClatchy and, and, and other sites that that Russia may be involved with the NRA, that the FBI is now allegedly investigating whether Russia was engaged in money laundering through the NRA to help elect Donald Trump. Uh, when you heard about this investigation, what did you think? This sounds incredible. Uh, the NRA is a very convenient money laundering operation for the Russians seeking to help the Trump campaign because under current law, as restricted and hogtied by the U.S. Supreme Court, their donors don't have to be disclosed. And there's this so it's the perfect setup for the Russians. There's this amazing character in the middle of all this reading about 
this man. His name is Alexander Torshin. He's deputy director of the Russian Central Bank. It's kind of like the Bank of Canada, only it's run by Vladimir Putin. Um, he is also reportedly wanted by Spanish authorities, almost as a mobster, the, uh, allegedly a godfather and money laundering schemes. And he's also a member of the NRA, and he attends all these fancy galas at the NRA. I mean, is this for real? Like, what on earth is going on there? Well, what on earth is going on is that uh, Putin personally decided that the last thing he wanted in his life was Hillary Clinton as president of the United States. So he pressed every button and pulled every lever that he could find to prevent that from happening. But what is the interest in in guns? And and isn't wouldn't that be it, it's illegal if it is foreign funds coming through uh, Russia through the NRA to Trump? So if it happened, what does that mean? What happens next? Oh, what happens next is that he, they they have to be tracked down and indicted, and uh, hopefully there'll be more to come, uh, because we it is in fact illegal uh, to have foreign money sloshing around in the United States for the benefit of a foreign power to put the tools, uh, the political tools of that foreign power uh, in power here in the United States. Could this end in the end of the NRA? Well, that remains to be seen. I mean, you know, the NRA as an organization has an inexhaustible supply of zealots uh, who continue to want to perpetuate the system that we have in the United States. So another massacre this past week. Do you see change? Do you see, like, people are angry? Uh, do you see change coming? You know, for every step that we see that I might try to take in the right direction, we see the NRA pushing, pushing, pushing all the time uh, to try to make it easier for people to get guns, uh, whether they're good souls or bad. So much to watch for here. Thank you very much. Alan Grayson, thank you. Thank you, too. Alan Grayson joins us from Orlando, Florida. We should mention that a lawyer for the NRA told McClatchy News that following their report, we have not been contacted by the FBI about anything related to Russia.